Hi and welcome to a Calculus 1 video on derivatives as a rate of change. So let's take a look at how we will define a derivative using a limit. So before we get into the specifics and some of the algebra surrounding derivatives and rates of change, let's look at a graph. All right, so let's take a look at this graph of a function and see if we can talk about derivatives at a rate of change graphically and, and make some sense out of some of this algebra and difference quotient discussion that we're going to have. So if this is my function, and I'm going to start with a random point right here where I have an x and an f of x, and I'll label this as a point just for future use, x comma f of x. Okay, and I'm just going to label it up here so it's sort of out of the way. Okay, then let's say we have some point two where I'm going to move over some horizontal distance and I have a new x value and I'm going to call that horizontal distance h for horizontal shift here. So I'm adding h onto x, so that new x value would be x plus h, and that corresponding point would be about right here. That y value would be f of x plus h. Okay, so I can easily find what we call the secant line between these two. I'll draw it and then I will have to delete it because otherwise this graph gets a little too busy. But here is my average rate of change. And if I continue drawing, it would be a secant line, right, going through two times. Okay, so I can find the slope of that secant line. And the slope of the secant line will require the two points. And I'm going to write the second point right underneath the first one up here, kind of out of the way. So that second point was x plus h comma f of x plus h. Okay? So in order to find the slope of that secant line, we're going to take y2 just from these two points that we've identified up near the top here. So we're going to take, we're going to take y sub 2, so f of x plus h, subtract f of x, right, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And I see that I can combine like terms in my numerator, so m, which denotes slope of my secant line, is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And this should absolutely be something that you are familiar with from a pre-calc course. And again, when I say pre-calc, I mean any class you took before calculus. So this is called the difference quotient. And you probably worked with this formula and simplified a whole bunch of functions, putting it into this form, and then having to try to divide the h out and you probably had very little meaning to it, but this is actually what it means. You're finding the average rate of change. The average rate of change of the function is going to tell you if you went, let's say, from your home to school and you traveled one constant speed the whole time, what would that speed be to get you there? versus speeding up and slowing down sometimes, right? So maybe, you know, on my way to school, I go on a freeway and some side streets, right? And stop at stoplights, stop signs, all of that. So maybe my average rate of change or my average speed might be, I don't know, 32 miles an hour. But my instantaneous rate of change is what my speedometer is actually telling me. So it's my speed at each moment in time. So every time I look down at my speedometer, it's going to tell me right now I'm going 45, 46, 47, or whatever the speed might be at that time. Or maybe I'm at a stop sign and it's zero. Okay, so let's talk about instantaneous rate of change. So I'm going to, just so that it doesn't get too busy in here, delete the secant line out of there. And what if I wanted to determine the instantaneous rate of change at this x value? 
Well, we still, I still need to calculate slope because instantaneous rate of change, after all, is still a rate of change. Okay, so it's still a rate of change, it's still a slope. But instead of it being the slope of the secant line, this is now going to be the slope of a tangent line because it's my slope at one moment in time, right now, right now, right now, right now. So I want to determine graphically here, and this will trans translate into our algebra in a second, what is the slope of my tangent line at x? My tangent line, if I drew it with a highlighter, might look something like so, where it touches my curve one time and also takes the shape of my curve. So it's, it's going to kind of tell me a little bit about my curve, where it's been and where it's going surrounding x. I need a second point. If my point is, is this far away, right, and h units away, it might be pretty far away, I don't know. I don't want it far away. I want my point as close as possible. So I'm going to bring this in. I want it as close as possible to the first x value, which means if I look at the x-axis, I'm basically saying I want to move this horizontal distance back so that it's as close to x as possible. And now I technically still have two points, point one and point two, and technically they're still the same, but I'm saying I don't want h to be some far distance away. I want to bring this in so it's as close to the first point as possible. How do I do that? Well, I can use limits to help me. So I'm going to say limit as h approaches zero. Now what do you think that's going to do? Limit as h approaches zero is going to do exactly what this green arrow is showing, is it's going to make that horizontal distance between the two points as close to zero as possible, but again it doesn't have to be zero because then I don't have two points. And I want to still calculate slope because it's still a rate of change. So I'm going to use the slope of my secant or with the two points that we have from above. That's that difference quotient. This is actually going to give me the instantaneous rate of change. This is actually going to give me the slope of the tangent line, and we define this to be what we call a first derivative. Okay, so this is really what we're going to be working on for this whole section here, or the majority of it at least. Now sometimes people think calculus is really difficult because see, Sometimes we can give you notation one where we're talking about the limit notation. Other times we can refer to an instantaneous rate of change. We can also refer to a slope of a tangent or I could refer to f prime of x or in words a first derivative. There's basically five different interpretations here for the same thing. So we really need to be sure that we recognize what are they asking us graphically, verbally, algebraically, and numerically. So I'm going to write those down for you. So you want to make sure that you can understand a problem numerically, algebraically, verbally, and graphically. This is actually, they call it the rule of four. <laughs> And this is true not just for calculus, right? This is true for every math class. If you can understand the rule of four for every problem or for all that apply anyway, then you really have a good chance of understanding what you're doing. So let's take a look now at some of the algebra behind all of this now that I think you have the idea of it. So we're going to be working with this notation and this definition of the derivative, because that's what this is. This is a limit definition of a derivative. We're going to be working with this for these algebraic problems. So, and I wrote a little bit up here as well. Derivative equals slope of the tangent line, and let's put another word here, equals instantaneous rate of change. And the derivative in notation is f prime of x, or f prime of a. 
Okay, so I think we've already developed this idea right here. It's just instead of an A, you can substitute in an X if you want, and then it's the same type of formula. You can use an A or an X. I like to use an X when I'm going through the work. Then I can substitute the A in at the end. Sometimes your A's tend to look like zeros after a while. So this question's asking me to find F prime of A, so I'm asking you for the first derivative at A, the instantaneous rate of change at A, I'm asking you to define the derivative at A, and I'm asking you to find F prime of two. Now even if you've been in a calculus course before, we're gonna ask that you can evaluate these limits. So please make sure you go through this process. So we actually did this in the pre video or in the video that you should have watched prior and this was our number one. So go ahead and take a screenshot of it or pause this video and write at least this part down so when we get to this algebra you have all of this denoted. But we already did do a lot of the simplifying so I'll come back to that when we need it. Alright so hopefully you paused and got what you needed. So let's set this up. Okay so what we're gonna say is limit well, first I'll say f prime of x. I'm going to keep x, okay, just for a little while. I can put a in when I'm done, and then I can substitute a 2 in when I'm done. I can substitute in anything that I want. So I'm just going to keep it general. Here's my function. It's already in terms of x, so I'm going to keep it x's for now. f prime of x equals, if you don't have limit, you don't have calculus. All right, calculus is the study of limits, so perhaps that's involved in every problem you have. So limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h. So I'm going to figure out what is f of x plus h based on my function up here. Well that would be me substituting in x plus h instead of x. So that'd be x plus h quantity to the fourth minus five times the quantity x plus h. Well that's going to require some simplification, which I'll do here in a minute. So I'm just going to write that down. This is x plus h to the fourth minus five times the quantity x plus h. That is f of x plus h. Then you're going to subtract your entire f of x. So my entire f of x needs to go in parentheses x to the fourth minus five x. I also don't recommend doing too many things at once. Too many times we say, oh, I'll just distribute that as I go, and then depending on how many terms, sometimes we forget that we're distributing a negative. So I just recommend write it down, right? Write the parentheses, it doesn't hurt for one step. And it's all over h. So again, I'm gonna reference what we did in the previous video. This is exactly the problem that we just copied down, right? So all this right here is exactly that problem just without the limit in front of it. So I'm going to copy the polynomial that I have right here down on the other page. Okay, so there I am. And now what? Well, I've removed the discontinuity. And so now what I will do is substitute zero in for h. So f prime of x equals, now that I'm evaluating the limit and I'm going to put in zero in place of h, I don't need to write the limit anymore. So it would be 4x cubed. Um, this term will go to zero, this term will go to zero, that term will go to zero because again I have zero times 6x squared, zero times 4x, and zero cubed. Then don't forget your minus 5 at the end. Now, I do need to be careful because if I did type this into any system, well, I wasn't asking for f prime of x, so it's going to tell me I'm wrong, even though I just did a whole bunch of work in between. They asked me for f prime of a, which I would just substitute in the a at that time for x, and then they asked me for f prime of 2. And I'm also going to write what these are in words so you get an idea of what we're asking you to find. f prime of 2, now I'm just algebraically or numerically rather substituting in 2 for a, 4 times 8 minus 5. So f prime of 2 is 32 minus 5 is 27. So what do these mean verbally? f prime of a would mean the slope 
of the tangent line at any value a is 4a cubed minus 5. F prime of 2 equals 27 is telling me the slope of the tangent line to f of x, I should say. at a. Um, so the slope of the tangent line to f of x at x equals 2 specifically in this case is 27. So if I look at x equals 2, it doesn't tell me about the y value. So maybe my point on my curve is right there. That's fine, but the slope of the tangent line is 27. It's extremely, extremely steep. I go up 27 to go over 1. So my curve is going to be very, very steep at that point. And my tangent line to my function or to my curve at x equals 2 is 27. All right, so I hope this helps you get started um, with some of these derivatives. Now, again, you've got to make sure that you understand what you are finding or what you are doing. So the fact that the derivative is the slope of the tangent line, is an instantaneous rate of change, and is that limit process, all like we talked about over here, all the different interpretations for the derivative, hopefully you can start working with those. There will be another video. Thanks for watching.